In this classwork, we're going to continue looking at the application of linear equations and their graphs. So I'd like you to pause the video and take a moment to read question one on yourself and think about uh, the blanks that are there and how you fill them in. And then I want you to um, press pause to turn the video back on when you're ready to go over number one. So in number one, it says a baker sells cupcakes at a local festival. He pays $50 to rent the booth, and then he charges $250 for each cupcake. And the baker wants to know how much money will he make for selling his cupcakes at the festival. So as I mentioned before, it's good to sketch, even though you don't have a graph, to sketch an x and y axes to help you decide what you would let x equal and what you would let y equal in this case. Okay, so here's your y, here's your x. And when looking at word problems, we're working in quadrant one. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this part of the axis, the left, and then below the y-axis for quadrant number one. Okay, because that's where x and y are both positive. So our x-axis, Okay, we're looking at uh, this baker, he's selling cupcakes, and then he wants to know how much money will he make, so he's going to end up with some sort of profit. Well, the profit is dependent upon the number of cupcakes. So your profit is here, and then the number of cupcakes here. And the profit that you make is dependent on the number of cupcakes. So x would be the number of cupcakes sold. And then here is the money he will make, okay, or the profit. Either is acceptable. What the rate of change? Well, we go back up to the question. He sells, or he charges rather, two fifty for each cupcake. So he's going to make two dollars and fifty cents per one cupcake. An initial value of y. Well, if we go back up, he is already, to the question, he's already paid $50 to rent the booth. So I say we're typically in quadrant one, but in this case, we're already $50 in debt, more or less. We've already spent that $50. So we're down here as our y on, you know, on the y-axis for the intercept. So our initial, initial just means starting. So our starting y value is negative 50 because I've already spent some money on renting the booth. The equation to represent this would be y equals our slope. So 250 over 1 would be 250x minus $50 or minus the 50. So it's only going to go up from here. Okay. The more cupcakes we sell, the more money we're going to make. All right, on to number two. So go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to read the question, and then pause it when you're ready, or unpause it when you're ready to go over it. Okay, in this question, we do have a graph or a grid that's already provided. So think about your axes before you write those let statements. So they didn't give us, okay, the spots to fill it in, so we have to write our let statements for the equation. What is x going to equal and what is y going to equal? So Tommy has 200 flyers, he's going to hand them out and he hands them out at an average of 15 flyers each hour. Write an equation to model the flyers he has left. Be sure to define your x and y. So, well, the more time I have, the more flyers I can hand out. So the number of flyers depends on the amount of time that I have. So the number of flyers is our y-axis. And our time in hours 
is our x-axis, okay? So x represents the time, and y is the number of flyers. I'm told that I'm starting with 200 flyers, so b is 200. There's my y-intercept. And then I'm handing it out at an average 15 flyers per one hour. So that's our slope. Okay? So the number of flyers is decreasing. So I want to make sure I'm 19 minus um, 15 flyers per one hour. The equation putting this together would be y equals negative 15x plus 200. Now you can go to your table of values um, on the calculator to fill that in. Okay, I want to see at least five points. But in this case, I know the y-intercept, so I'm just going to find the x-intercept. So I'm going to let y equal 0 to find the x. Okay? And then I can just connect with a straight line. So the x-intercept, when I let y equal 0, it's going to be 0 equals, I forgot my minus sign above, negative 15x plus 200. Subtract the 200. Divide by negative 15. And x equals 13 and a third. Okay? 13.33. It's going to be about here. Okay, so you can also, rather than using that, you can plot the slope. So each line is counting by 20, so you could go down 15 and over 1. But I would, in this case, um, just draw in your line. So using the line tool, here's our line. Part C, to go along with this graph, before I move down, I just want to label. After, or how many flyers will Tommy still have after four hours? Your four hours is your x. Okay? You can look at the graph where x equals four, or you can plug it into the equation which is y equals negative 15 times 4 plus 200. I would actually do it out by hand since we just put a dot right here where we thought was 13.33, and that might not be exact. So your, so your best bet is to plug it into the equation. So 15 times 4 is negative 60, plus 200 is going to give you a y value of 140. And y-axis is the number of flyers. So it's going to be 140 flyers. The last part, here's the equation to determine how many hours it will take to deliver all. Well, to deliver all, we're out of them right here. And since we found the x-intercept over here, we have the answer. Okay? So, use the equation to determine how many hours it will take, we don't want to round, 13 and one third hours to deliver all flyers. And if you want to make note, um, we look at the x-intercept. Number three. So go ahead and pause the video so you can read it, and then we will go over it together. Okay, so what does the 250, 35, M, and then 35, M represent? 
Okay. So she's opening a bank account with the money that she got for her birthday. She deposited, she will deposit money into the account each month. Her bank balance can be described by the expression 250 plus the 35M. Explain what the quantities 250, 35, and M represent, and then explain what the expression 35M represents. Well, the 250 is her um, starting amount, okay, our initial amount of money, or the money she opened the account with. Okay, so she started with that amount of money. The starting amount. The 35 represents the amount that she's going to deposit per month. So amount of money she deposits each month. And then M is our number of months. So then putting these two together, the 35M is going to be in the amount she has total, uh, her total deposit, okay? So this is the um, total amount of money deposited. Um, we'll say after M months. All right, last one. So go ahead and pause the video and read number four, and then we'll go over it. Okay. So let's actually fill in our x and y axes first on the graph before we define x and y. So whatever you put here is going to be our x and y above. So Andrew's taking a taxi to visit his grandparents and his cousins. The rate is the same for both trips, so therefore it's a line. We have a flat fee of bringing the cab to the residence and then a charge per mile. Suppose the trip to your grandparents has the coordinates 315 and the trip to your cousins has 419. Okay, define the x y in the context of this trip. So to determine the cost, okay, that's going to be our y-axis. Okay, we need to know the number of miles that we're going. Okay, so x is the number of miles. And Y is the total cost. And what quadrant is this graph meaningful? So this is quadrant one. And this is the case because there's no way your cost, your total cost, could be negative in this case, and we can't go a negative number of miles. And the other question on the front where we had already paid $15 or $50 to rent that booth, the Baker question, we were already 15 or $50 in the hole. We're not going to pay any cost, okay, for this taxi, uh, taxi cab ride unless we actually go on the ride, okay? So that's why we're in quadrant one. So there is no way the cost or miles. could be negative. Part C, plot the coordinate pairs and sketch the graph. So our pairs are 315 and 419. So I'm going to sketch the line that goes through those two points. Let's do that in green. So in connecting those two, make sure the line goes through each, I end up here. 
And if I take a look, another way to keep plotting more points is go from this point to the other point, go down 1, 2, 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3. Oh, did I miscount? It's actually four. So let's go back. Let's say I'm not on my line. That's four. Down one, two, three, four over one. One, two, three, four over one. There we go. I'm on the line. One, two, three, four over one. One, two, three, four over one. So we have a y-intercept of three. Where's that coming from? Let's go back to the question. Where is that coming from? That's coming from the flat fee. So that's the flat fee, and then from only that, and from there, the cost is going to be increasing. So plot the coordinate pairs, record the value of the y-intercept. So our b is three, and our slope is negative. Or I'm sorry, I was counting down. It's positive four over one, as we have a positive slope, which is four. Okay. Explain their meaning in this context. So the y-intercept is the flat fee of $3. And then our slope means it's going to cost us, again, slope is change of y over change of x. That means it's going to cost, since our y-axis was our cost, four dollars per one mile. Okay, so our equation would look like y equals our slope of 4x plus 3. At the bottom, given the two coordinates in the question, use an algebraic method to find the, fun the equation. Okay, for these two coordinates in the question, there's an equation for the line match the one from your graph. How do you know? So if I use an algebraic method using the two points of 315 and then 419, we can see our slope is 9 minus 15 over 4 minus 3, which is negative 4 over 1. So my slope is negative 4. That's checking out. And then to find b, I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. And I'll use the point 4, 9. So does 9 equal negative, or I'm sorry, I'm finding b. I'm not seeing if it's correct. Uh, 9 equals negative 4 times our slope, or my x of 4, sorry, plus b. So 9 equals negative 16 plus b. Add the 16. not coming out right. And that's because my point, and I apologize, but it's late. I stay to record because I'm not here. It's 419. But notice how I noticed my mistake when my B wasn't coming out to be the correct number of 3. So that's important. When you notice you made a mistake, go back and look at the question, and it was actually 419. Okay, so 19 minus 15 also would have been a positive 4, so my slope is positive 4. That checks out. Jeez, I'm so sorry. So does 19, okay, equal a positive 4 times 4 uh, plus our b value, which should be 3. So 19 equals 16 plus b. Subtract the 16 and b equals 3. It does check out. Whew.